In all your resolvers and mutations, you can optionally inject the data fetching environment by specifying it as the last parameter in each of the methods. And this data fetch environment contains a method called get context. And this context will return an argument that is created once when the, the query will run. And then that will be available to all of your, your data fetchers, which in Spring Grid GraphQL is actually the resolvers. And it's never modified internally by GraphQL Java. So that allows us to, it gives us space to create a single object, let's say a global object that should be immutable once when the query is executed. And then that will be available throughout all of our mutations and resolvers. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing you want to do is we have to create a context builder object. So I've created a package here and I'm going to create a class custom GraphQL context builder. And inside this class, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to first override this method or this interface called GraphQL server context builder. And I will implement methods from that. And here we need to make this a component. I'm going to add some logs. So I'll set SLF or J. Now, in this example, we do not support um, web sockets. So I'm going to just simply throw an exception. And also we don't use this final build method. So I'll throw an exception here. The only method we're going to use is the normal HTTP request response from the servlet, which is inside here. So go ahead and let's say throw new illegal state exception. Say unsupported just for this demo. So if you did support WebSockets, you would have to override this. And I can do that in another video. And inside here, this is where we provide the hook to actually create this GraphQL context. And this is the, the object which will be available by the data fetch environment get context method. So here we want to create an object which will contain the user ID. So let's go ahead and get the, the user ID from the header. So if we have an user underscore ID header, which we will supply by GraphQL Playground. And then what we want to do is actually create this class GraphQL context, but we don't actually want to extend this class. We want to extend the servlet context. So this one, which extends GraphQL context because we're executing in a servlet. So what I like to do is first, let's go ahead and create this GraphQL custom or custom GraphQL context. There's a few steps here. So custom GraphQL context. And we want to implement that class. So the one I just showed you, GraphQL servlet context. And then we implement the methods. We want to use getter and required arcs constructor. And inside here, this is where we have the user ID. And what we also want is a GraphQL servlet context, which is actually going to be the real context. And I will explain that in one second. And now I want to just provide somewhat delegate methods here. So get file parts, get parts. And I'm doing this because I'm going to actually use the built-in GraphQL default servlet context, and I'm going to pass it into this custom GraphQL context as basically a wrapper, which has a delicate, so somewhat of a proxy to it. So that means we don't have to reconstruct a lot of the, the already constructed code from that construction object. So now inside this class, we have all of our delegate methods, plus we have a user ID object. So if I bring this guy over here, 
now inside here what I want to do is now create the default or this GraphQL servlet context which will be injected in here and that's actually called the default GraphQL servlet context so I can create the servlet context and then I can say with servlet request with servlet response and then I would have additional methods to attach the data loader which will be in another video and I can also attach the subject but now we're fine with what we have so we can build that so we can return this and now what we do is we return the custom GraphQL context user ID and context so now we have built our custom object so in our resolvers this will now be created once and inside here we can say environment get context and here because this returns a generic type t we can just say custom graphql context context and here we can write log.info user id context.get user id so it's that simple and you can use this to pass some anything you want to get up front once and make it immutable this is a nice way of doing that so let's go ahead and debug this see if everything starts up okay okay looks like it's good and if we go to playground if i execute this then you'll see inside here that it's printed my user id so idp identity provider so and that was the ID that I passed in via Playground, HTTP headers. Now if I put a breakpoint in the builder, I forgot to do that. And play that through and then execute another one. You'll see that it's it comes here once, runs the methods. And here we have the user ID and we have the context object built up. And then in our requests, if we need to get access to that, it just delegates to the default one, which will give us access to the likes of the file parts and all that good stuff. So we don't want to recode all of this. We, we use what's existing. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching the tutorial.